welcome back to the show and today my friends we are going to be discussing if and when we might get a sequel to Ben Studios open world zombie centric post apocalyptic action survival horror game Days Gone. And why am I making this video about this now you ask? Well it's because a fan made petition begging Sony to reconsider greenlighting a sequel is set to hit a staggering 150,000 signatures later this week. That's an outstanding show of support for an IP and it got me wondering whether Days Gone might just have a future despite Sony's apparent complete ambivalence to the franchise. But before we get into whether that's likely, just a quick reminder as always that if you enjoy the video that you should like, subscribe, comment, and hit that notifications bell as that'll keep you up to date with all of the future content from this channel and enter you into the giveaway that I'm currently running that could see you walk away with a free copy of Horizon Forbidden West. And full terms and conditions for that can be found in the video description below. But getting back to it, following the release of Days Gone, developer Ben Studio was keen to begin work on a sequel, and even got so far as to pitch it to Sony. However, PlayStation turned it down and instead set Ben to work on a brand new IP. The fact that it got rejected doesn't necessarily mean that we won't see a Days Gone 2. But before we discuss whether a revival of the series is likely, we first need to understand why Sony may have turned down the sequel in the first place. For starters, it's been frequently reported that Days Gone had a relatively lengthy and reportedly somewhat troubled development cycle of around six years. Obviously, Sony would have wanted this turned around faster than that as we live in a world and an industry where time quite literally means money and video games are phenomenally expensive to create. So a longer development cycle inevitably means higher costs and also can sometimes serve as an indication that a title is having trouble coming to fruition. That said, in this case, six years isn't exactly egregious. As a quick hot nasty example, Sucker Punch also took that same amount of time to develop Ghost of Tsushima. But beyond that, Days Gone also suffered from a mixed critical reception at launch, with some harsher reviewers taking aim at specific story scenes and elements, along with the buggy nature of the release. But I do want to note here that many of the fans of the series, including myself, disagreed with a lot of the harsher pieces of criticism directed towards the game, and that was reflected in the Metacritic user score for the title, which is currently sitting at a handsome 8.4 over the critic's meagre 71%. Regardless, I can say from personal experience that the harsh critical reception of the game significantly affected its early sales. Days Gone was, after all, a new franchise and gamers had little idea of what to expect of it in terms of quality. The less than glowing universal reception caused a lot of gamers, including myself, to sleep on it for months or in some cases even years. As to its commercial performance, well, we don't really have any official sales numbers for the game. However, it's clear from recent interviews and the simple fact that PlayStation didn't immediately Greenlight a sequel that Sony considered the title to have underperformed relative to its internal expectations. And that's despite the fact that according to Days Gone director Jeff Ross, who is no longer at Bend or PlayStation, Days Gone had managed to shift an impressive 8 million copies within a year and a half of launch, which would put it on a comparable footing in terms of units sold with Sucker Punch's Ghost of Tsushima, which has been greenlight for both a sequel and a movie adaptation. But of course it is also worth noting that the accuracy of Ross's figures had been called into question, though he continues to stand by them. But regardless, he went on to say that local management of PlayStation always made the studio feel like Days Gone was a big disappointment. And when it came to the critics and Sony's own view of the game, it would be difficult to deny that it suffered enormously in terms of expectation management from the ridiculously high bar set by previous first party PlayStation titles. I mean, the PS4 generation has seen the release of games like the 2018 God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, Spider Man, and The Last of Us, all of which were both critical and commercial successes straight out of the gate. That is not a yardstick that you want to be measured by if your day's gone. And it was likely a combination of all of these factors, plus others that we'll never know about behind the scenes that prompted Sony to reject Ben's pitch for a Days Gone 2 in the belief that the studio's talent and time would be better spent generating an entirely new IP which could in the long run be more profitable. Thankfully, PlayStation's now well-documented rejection of the sequel doesn't mean that one isn't ever gonna happen. The IP didn't simply disappear at that moment. It exists, and if the video game industry has shown us anything in its 60 plus years of existence, it's shown us that mistakes can be made and that once dormant franchises can rise again from the dead. So now let's look into if and when we could see a Days Gone 2 grace our screens. 
Well, first off, when talking about viability, it's important to remember that some of Sony's issues with a potential sequel could still be there. For example, they may be concerned about another drawn-out development cycle, but to me, that wouldn't really make much sense. After all, PlayStation currently has been working on a brand new IP, which means they have to create an entirely new universe, characters, and creatures to populate that universe, relevant game mechanics, and an overarching storyline capable of binding all of these disparate elements together into a functioning game. As you can imagine, creating something from nothing, unless that something is relatively simplistic, takes a whole lot of time and investment. On the flip side, when it comes to a potential Days Gone sequel, we need to note that it's already an established franchise. It's already had these teething pains. The world exists, the characters exist, the key gameplay mechanics exist already to be built on. Beyond that, if you've finished the game and you've seen the so-called secret ending, you'll also know that key elements surrounding a potential story for the sequel are already in place. In other words, a huge amount of work and therefore development time, and then money, has already been undertaken with a potential Days Gone 2 in comparison to the creation of a new IP that you'd have to create from scratch. Now let's talk briefly about sales potential for a sequel. As we discussed earlier, one of the factors that inevitably hamstrung Days Gone out of the gate was the fact that it was the first game in an entirely new IP. No one knew what to expect and therefore people were less willing to lay their money down and take a risk that the game would be good. Obviously, the mixed critical reception compounded that issue, forcing a lot of people to sleep on the game until word trickled down through the community that, yeah, this game has its problems, but it's a phenomenally enjoyable experience and it's well worth the time and money. A Days Gone sequel, on the other hand, would have a ready-made audience in the form of die-hard fans and curious members of the PlayStation installer base who can't help but be aware of the franchise either through reputation or by way of the controversies that followed. Therefore, sales of a sequel would easily outstrip those of the original Days Gone, and the fan fervor for a sequel is there. As we mentioned earlier, a petition to Sony begging it to greenlight a sequel is set to hit 150,000 subscribers this week, and PlayStation is going to register that collective urge to give them money in a big way. We also can't ignore the fact that the industry landscape has changed dramatically since the Days Gone sequel pitch was rejected. Counting Microsoft's acquisition of ZeniMax Media and more recently Activision Blizzard, Xbox now has over 30 studios which are readying themselves to unleash an onslaught of games from both brand new and established IPs. So PlayStation is going to want as much depth as possible in terms of their game franchises in order to counter the Microsoft arsenal. And that could well involve revisiting and creating new games for currently dormant IPs. In other words, I think there's a better chance of Days Gone 2 being made today than there would have been back when Bend initially pitched the sequel. So in my opinion, it is very likely that we are going to get a sequel at some point down the line. As to how long we're going to have to wait, well that very much depends on how well Bend's current project does. As we mentioned earlier, the studio is currently working on a brand new IP that's set to leverage the open world design and unique horde mechanic from Days Gone. If that game proves to be successful, then a sequel to this as of yet unnamed franchise could be greenlit before they give the go ahead to bring Deacon St. John out of retirement. But if Ben's new IP is less than successful or runs into serious trouble in development, then we could see Days Gone 2 put into active production either following the launch of the new IP or even sooner. Only time will tell, but one thing is for sure, we're much more likely to see a Days Gone 2 manifest itself into reality if fans continue to show their full-throated support for the series through social media and petitions. And that's it for today. Let me know what you thought about the episode in the comments section below. Do you think we're ever likely to see a sequel or am I just being wildly optimistic? And be sure to keep it here for all the biggest news, reviews and reactions from around the video gaming industry.